So we now present a tutorial on how to differentiate with a computer focused on the reverse mode. And there's a wonderful article, feature column, by the American Mathematical Society, and you can see the link there. And I have permission from the author, David Austin, from the Grand Valley State University in the Mathematics Department, and the permission of the American Mathematical Society for presenting this work. So let's have a look at a piece of the article, which is a tutorial on this reverse mode. So let's begin here with a graph of a computation that's going to take us from x, y, z to w shown. And we did a little miniature version of this earlier, and I think it's fairly explanatory. We've broken the graph up, and the function is x, y, sine of y, z. So it's broken up into all the computational pieces where w is the final result, t is equal to x, y, and v is equal to the sine of y, z. So the first thing we're going to do, and we want to evaluate the partial derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z at the point 3 minus 1, 2. So the first thing we do is we do a forward pass, and it's just direct substitution. I'll only go through one here. You can see, for example, that x is 3 and y is minus 1. The product is minus 3. And we do the same for the right-hand side. It's self-explanatory. Now what we need to do is calculate the derivatives of w with respect to x, y, and z. And we're going to follow it all the way through using the chain rule as needed and set the result up. So these are called adjoint variables, sensitivities, as we go from w at the top down backwards to x, y, and z. So for instance, you can see that x is equal to dw dx and u is dw du. Now, let's look at this. By the way, one of the easiest derivatives is dw with respect to itself. That's equal to 1. So you can see from the diagram, for example, that dw dx is dw dt dt dx. dw dt dt dx. It's just on this branch here. So we go from w to t, dw dt, then dt dx. And when we do that and substitute in the values, we get t bar y. The bars are the so-called adjoint variables, and you can show that it's equal to minus sine of minus 2. And the rest, here's another example, dw dy. Well, dw dt dt dy, because y is involved in this branch, and then also dw du du dy. Let's go. So dw du du dy, and dw du is dw dv dv du, so it's a triple product in the chain rule. When we substitute in, if we substitute in all the numbers, we get the following list of derivatives. Now, so we have how many? X, ha X bar, Y bar, Z bar, T bar, U bar, V bar, W bar, and that's seven. And how many nodes have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven nodes seven, if you like, linear constraints, which we can write as a matrix equation that's upper triangular. If you just set all these equations up and have the vector x is, are all these adjoint variables, the derivatives with respect to w, and only one is a constant, so that will go over to the other side. 
and the b, of course, will be all zeros, and there's the 1. And that's the equation w equals 1. This is triangular, so back substitution gives us the result. You can set this up for a general situation. It's done automatically, and what's necessary is mapping the operations to basically a tree graph, a computation graph, as we saw previously, that's automatic. So what we have to do in the actual setup for neural networks is traverse the tree backwards. So it becomes a problem in tree traversal plus using automatic differentiation to compute your derivatives. And then you can handle 50 million variables, 50 million nodes if you need to. It's all automatic and the guts of it is tree traversal.